Hi everyone and this is a quick video basically I've decided you might see me walking around in this video because this is a voiceover because I wasn't happy with the audio um, from the camera I'm gonna have to buy a decent microphone for that but um yeah basically I wanted to show you how to make a white background go to grey because um, it was asked somebody asked me to do it now it's a very basic video so if anybody knows how to do this then you might as well just not bother watching this video to be honest um i like what go on for long if you're not doing out else um so basically if you look at the video now you can see i've got a flash what i'm going to photograph on a light stand and i've got a flash with me yn622c and my 580x off camera shooting through an umbrella and i have put the i was using manual mode on the flashes but obviously I did it all through the camera's menu, which were great. Never had to touch the flash. Um, so basically what I've done is, if you look, I mean, I'm a bit limited for space, but what I've done is I've got the umbrella as near as I can to the flash so that basically it'll use the inverse square law. If you've got a big light source like an umbrella, if you can get it as close to your subject as possible, you'll get less light fall off behind you. So, less light spilling onto the background. Now, that flash is very near that background. I don't know if the video is going to show it. <coughs> I don't know if the video is going to show it or not, but it's very near to the background. And you'll see on the first shot that it's it's not jet white, but it's, it's there's quite a lot of spill on it. Um, and then as we start to move the flash further and further away, what I tried to do was just move the flash away from the background. And try keep the umbrella distance the same, but I, I didn't get it quite perfect as you'll see. But you'll see, you'll get the meaning how you can easily drop it into dull grey, so you can use a nice white background and have a grey background at the same time. What what I would recommend is the only downfall to it is if you're gonna like use a bed sheet or something like that. What happens is. Um, you see all creases even when it's grey you see all the creases on the bed sheet when you've done so you can either one shoot at a shallower depth of field so shoot at something like 2.8 or f 2.8 should be fine um get nice and close up to your subject so the background will be out of focus or if not you can actually fix it in photoshop by uh, making a quick selection around your subject and invert the selection and create a, a gaussian blur and just blur it out that way. But anyway, on to the video. Um, and let's get on with uh, showing you how to make a white background go from white to grey. Hi everyone. And as you can see, here is um, the first shot on the left. And the third shot on the right. I'll just show you the second shot. So you can see the one on the left, the background's not blazing white because I didn't use an additional light but you can see it's very very whitish then the second one is now falling into grey and then if we just look at the third one you can really see that that's a lot greyer now if you're actually looking at the, the edges that look a bit dark there I think that that is the um, edge of the reflector the little black bit that runs around the edge um, so as you can see the one on the left is much brighter than the one on the right and we've now got a lovely grey grey background right i'm just going to talk to you quickly about the inverse square law and about a little bit about soft light as well um if you the the reason why i kept the umbrella so close to the subject i.e the flash is so that i would get less light fall off on the back uh, sorry more light fall off on the background meaning that the inverse square law basically what happens is if you've got your flash, uh, your flash that you're actually using to illuminate this flash, because there's two flashes, so it keeps confusing me. Um, uh, let's pretend that this is not a flash that I've photographed and it's a person, right? So if you put your flash about, I don't know, a meter away from the person and you take the picture, you, you will get a lot less light spill. It'll fall off quicker. The light will fall off a lot faster. So that's an easier way to put it. So basically means that for this sort of shot, because you're trying to turn the white background into a grey, you don't want light really going on it. The less light, the more grey it's going to be. So you want to use the inverse square law, which means getting a nice big light source up close to your subject 
um, or your flash in this case, and your light will fall off much, much faster and you'll have a greyer background than doubling the distance of your light source. So I had it about three feet away. If I'd have moved the light eight feet away, one, I'd have had to turn up the power, which is obvious, and two, you, let's just use this third shot as an example. If I'd have doubled the distance of the light source from the flash, and we'd have looked at this picture, I guarantee you that that would not be as grey as that, because I'd have got more spill from the light source, because the light doesn't fall off as quick when the light is further away. So if you're not quite sure what the inverse square law, law is, basically I've just explained it to you. The bigger the light source, the nearer the light source, the faster it will fall off. Um, the further away the light source, that's why when you're photographing a dance or something at a wedding, if you can get the flashes a, a distance away, you'll have a lot less fall off. So if your subjects are in the middle of the dance floor and you've got the flash right next to them and they move three foot away from the flash, they might be really dark. Whereas if you've got the flash 12 foot away, remember the inverse square law, the light falls off a lot less when it's further away. Then they might move three foot away and you won't really be able to tell the difference. They'll be still illuminated the same. If you're not quite sure, Google uh, YouTube the inverse square law and you'll see what I mean. I think Adorama TV did a good a good diagram on it, but it's, it's, it's worth knowing if you're going to be using flash and stuff like that. And another thing that I would like to state is that I see so many people using light sources outside when basically the bigger the light source and the closer you can get it to your subject, the softer the light is. And I see, I mean, we were out at a model shoot not so long ago and somebody had a, a small soft box. It was about 50 centimetres, maybe 60, but I don't even think it was quite that big. And he had it like 10 or 15 foot away. And that's not how you use a soft box. A soft box is made to be as close as you can get it to your subject without it being in frame and then it will be softer. I mean, you, I'm not saying you can't do what my this kid did but in all fairness you, you might as well have just gone base robe because it wouldn't daylight anyway so there's no real point in putting the soft box it's like people who go outside with store fan diffusers on when you're using flash for just fill flash to just sprinkle a bit of a light in those eyes to give you one a catch light and two to get rid of the raccooned eye sockets you don't need to use a store fan diffuser you're just wasting your flash power. Instead of your flash doing the job at quarter power, it might be firing at full power every time, and it won't look any different because it's only fill flash. Now, maybe an all flash picture where you was in pitch black and you was using the store fan, then that would probably look a little bit better coming out of the store fan than it would going direct. Anyway, I hope this video helps. Um, I know it's a pretty basic, simple one for a lot of my subscribers, but there's a few that may pick up a couple of tips. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe.